Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect. Today, we're jumping back into some more FTB Skies. Oh, that's right. Today, we're getting into some ore processing. Hopefully, you guys are ready. So, I've done a little bit of work. As you can see, I have finished up the walls in our build here, uh, getting ready for uh, some more expansion. Right now, uh, this is just our first floor. This is actually going to expand upward and outward. Um, as we're going to need a lot of room for a lot of these different mods. And this is just going to be the starting foundation. And we're going to use elevators to sort of get ourselves up and down. That's sort of the goal, right? Uh, but for right now, today, we really need to focus on a way to turn this raw ore and smelt it down into uh, the ingot form. So that way we can, uh, we'll always have ingots and things like that. So I think thermal is honestly going to be one of the best options for uh, doing that at the start. Um, now, later on, Mechanism is so good, so good at smelting things. It's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but getting started in the Mechanism takes a bit of time, and you also need a bit of resources to do that. Uh, so I was thinking, uh, let's get into Thermal. Plus, it's going to get us some nice tools like the Flux Bore, which can mine a 3x3 area. Uh, it can even mine a 5x5 area. Uh, but mining a 3x3 area will be kind of nice when we start to clear out more of the uh, the underside of our island. Um, now, to get things like this, you can see we're going to need a bit of these resources. And so that's where getting this all smelted up is going to be really, really handy. To do most of the smelting, the redstone furnace is a really good early game option. I will say the redstone furnace, uh, redstone furnace on its own it may not seem like much, but once it has a few of its upgrades, this thing's a beast. This thing can actually smelt incredibly fast. Um, so it'll definitely be worthwhile getting into this. Now, as you can see, got to get all of these bits and bobs crafted up in order to make this thing. But once we have it all going, uh, this will be really, really nice. So uh, getting the power transferred to this, <laughs> really simple, actually. Um, we already have our wireless power, so we're good there, right? So we just need a GPS and we just tap a GPS on this. Wherever we decide to put it. Um, now, I'm thinking about putting it in this room for right now. And we can put a GPS on it right here. And we can line this up so that way all our blocks down below, we can get our cables hooked into the bottom here. And that should look really nice. Now, our GPS, we'll just shift right click on it. And that will link it to our power grid. Put it in here. And now this should start filling up with power just like we want. We definitely want this going. Now... This isn't the only machine we're going to need. We're actually going to need several of the machines. And I would suggest like early on making yourself the redstone furnace, pulverizer, induction smelter, multi servo press is going to be really handy for a lot of the stuff in this mod. And even a blast chiller, if you absolutely want it, uh, the blast chiller is going to be handy for making honey blocks and other things later on down the road, like ice. We have other ways of making ice, but it would be kind of handy to have this started up. So I'm going to get most of these crafted. So all of our machines are lined up nice and neat. I have all of the machines that I uh, wanted to get set up, including a Tinker's work Workbench, which is going to be kind of neat. This is how you actually upgrade and modify your tools. Um, but all of this is hooked into our transfer nodes. So this thing is really coming in clutch and we can always make more transfer nodes uh, the more, for the you know more things that we're wanting to hook into our power grid. Um, now, at the moment, they're all set up, but they're not really doing much. We actually need to put these together and start working on upgrades. So we have hardened integral components, we have the re reinforced integral components, and the resonant. So these just require more of these uh, parts like invar, more of these materials. And you can actually craft all of these materials um, inside of the refined storage or inside of a crafting grid. Um, like like Signalium. In the past, <laughs> this, when this mod was uh, way back, way back in the day, this was like a very specific craft that you could only make um, inside of this machine right here, inside of the uh, induction smelter. Uh, but now you can actually combine these and you can easily make this so long as you have a fire charge. Uh, this makes the recipe really, really simple. Uh, but you can still do it in an induction smelter. You can see it just doesn't cost the fire the it just doesn't cost the fire charge But it's it's basically the same recipe So of course the first thing I want to get automated is going to be the furnace um, Now right now I want to turn this on and make sure this side is set to Import to pull from this chest which is blue and then orange is output So I'm gonna set this to orange and it's gonna output on this side when you're facing the front of this machine 
It's the same as this configuration window. This in the, the very far uh, bottom uh, right corner, this is the back of the machine. So the bottom is the bottom, this is the top, this is the face, which normally doesn't have an input. But if you hold shift while you click on this, um, it'll actually clear all of the outputs uh, and all the settings for you. Kind of a nice little feature. Um, so I should be able to now take some of our materials like iron, for example, which we're gonna be using a lot. And I would grind it. I'm actually gonna use the pulverizer for some other things, but grinding this is a pretty slow process and we're gonna be getting just two if we're lucky. Um, so with all these machines, there's, I would say the only, only uh, way to duplicate this and get a lot of stuff for your uh, single raw ore is gonna be to use a cultism and use the highest tier uh, spirit crusher which I think, unless it's changed, can give you six dust, um, six or eight uh, for a single iron, unless that was changed. Um, now, it does show the default, and this is the lowest tier spirit, I believe, will give you double. So even on the lowest tier, it's actually better than most of these machines. Even mechanism doesn't grant you doubling. Uh, it's actually not doubling on any of these machines on the lower tiers of things. So in reality, in this mod pack, duplicating your ore is probably not something you really have to worry about as you get tons of raw material. So you can just straight up smelt it right out if you, if you want to, and then worry about duplicating it later if that's something you're interested in. So for me, I just wanna get this smelted. By default, it's gonna be pretty slow. But as soon as we get these upgrades that I'm gonna be working on, oh boy, is this stuff gonna go. Uh, so let me get some of these raw materials. Don't want osmium, but I do want tin. The things that I'm going to be using is tin, nickel, silver, uh, gold, and copper. Um, all of these things are going to be super useful, and so I want these to be processed so we can make more and more of these upgrades. I hope I didn't just drown you there with information. Sometimes I'm bad at that. I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you enjoy me rambling on about old things? I don't know. Just I've experienced these mods and just so much has changed over the years. It's just crazy, honestly, how much has actually changed. So with uh, the first upgrades made, I have the hardened integral. Now by default, you can see this is producing 40 RF per tick. It is completely maxed out. Uh, and then with this having an augment inside of it, which goes up here in this top slot, um, we are using 40 RF per tick. So we're basically using everything that this is generating and solely relying on the 80 that this uh, combustion generator is producing. So we really need to up our game. And to do that, we can put a single integral in here and that's gonna produce 80 now and gonna give us a little bit more storage for our lava. Uh, and it's going to scale this by a factor of two. And uh, these, that's exactly what these do. These are just scale factors and are gonna scale what's currently happening by that factor. Now to really boost it, to really boost it, we have to use these uh, amplifiers. So we have uh, our auxiliary, so we have an auxiliary amplifier, a flux linkage amplifier, and an auxiliary processing uh, sieve. Now, all of these do different things. Now the linkage amplifiers are going to go in machines. It tells you the type there. Now, the auxiliary reaction chamber increases the generation rate or reduces efficiency on dynamos. You can see the type there. And that's kind of what we want for our dynamo. We want, it may consume more lava, but we want to generate as much power as we possibly can. Now, the auxiliary processing, this right here is for secondary outputs and is really, really helpful for our pulverizer. So it doesn't, it doesn't increase the speed of our pulverizer which we could do if we put an auxiliary, uh, if we put a linkage amplifier in. Uh, but what this will do is this will help get us a higher chance of getting a byproduct um, from our, our crushing if we decide to do ores, but it also works for other things as well. So these are probably the most used out of all of the augments that you're going to see. Now, the main one I'm gonna be focusing on is of course uh, these two right here, the auxiliary reaction chamber, which they do cost signal signalium plates, signalium plates. I always say signalium, I don't know why, um, but this is going to cost plates. So that is why we have the press. Very nice, right? Um, now we can press it there or we can send it over here to create to do that as well. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, I'm running out of food right now. Uh, now there's a couple of different ways I can auto eat in this pack. And I don't know why I've glossed over this. But we can make a backpack upgrade that allows us to auto eat or there's actually an auto feeder that's even easier to get. Um, so auto 
And it's, it's easy to overlook because this thing is tiny. It is a feeder helmet module. Uh, I know. It's, it, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, how did I miss this thing? But it is... It's here. And apparently... I don't know if this goes in the helmet slot or this goes on a helmet. But... Let's see. Can we combine this with a helmet? Yes. If we put this on... We should auto-eat. Um, let's grab some food. Uh, when you search for food, you can actually put a hash here, and it'll search for the data that's underneath, like the uh, the little uh, flavor text you can see. It'll search for that. And uh, let's see, eaten is a term that is underneath here, so not yet eaten, you can see, and then it'll pull up all of the food. If we put this in here, you can see it's auto-consuming food now. And it'll even consume raw, I think, right? Or is it may, it may have a cook list. Uh, I have no idea. I can put sweet berries in there. You can see it just ate the sweet berries for me. That's a neat little thing. Like, you can add to your helmet, and, like, all of your helmets will have that on it. Really cool. Yeah, you can see. Auto-feeding mode. And I, I'm assuming you can turn it on and off. Probably has a, a toggle. Now, Signalium in Thermal is not too hard to get. You just need Copper, Silver, and Redstone Dust in that Fire Charge. And same thing goes for Lumium. Lumium uh, only needs Tin, Glowstone, and a Fire Charge as well. And then one of the hardest things to make is honestly Enderium, but it's not. It's just the same as everything else. However, you do need Diamond Dust for this. Um, you can use Ender Pearls, but you do need Diamond Dust. To get Diamond Dust, well, that's why we made the Pulverizer. Um, so, take the Diamond, and we just toss that into our Pulverizer and let that crush up for right now. Uh, and while that's working, we can start working on getting the Augments, the rest of the Augments in here. Now, with us putting in these uh, these linkage amplifiers, keep in mind the process, um, the amount of energy is going to scale. Uh, and it becomes a little bit more. Right now, we're doing 40, but if I put all of the linkages in there, now it's consuming 160. Now, to combat this, I should be able to generate more power with our magmatic dynamo by putting these in. You can see now we're generating 320. And uh, that is all coming from our auxiliary reaction chamber or that we uh, that we added to this. Now, this will scale even further uh, once we upgrade our integral components, because right now this integral component is only a factor of two. So once we get it all the way up to resonant, it gets a little bit crazy, being uh, allowing us to generate even more power uh, from this single dynamo. So now here's where the craziness is going to happen. This thing is going to be producing quite a bit of power off of our lava. Let's go ahead and take this component out and put this one in. And we're going to jump to 640 FE or RF per tick. And watch our lava just go down as this output starts to fill up. Um, now, our lava is only going down because we don't have a speed upgrade. <laughs> so it's uh, it's kind of looks like it's struggling sending the lava in here. Um, but that's fine. Once it fills up the buffer, this will end up filling up. I would probably need to go in and upgrade the refined storage uh, pump that's down there. Uh, as far as this goes... It's easily able to keep up with the lava from the looks of it. Uh, now, let's upgrade this, because right now it's not processing anything, so it's a good time to put that in. And now we're going to be consuming 320 RF per tick. That is a lot of RF for some processes. But when it's at max, which I don't even know if I want it at max right now, let me just show you how fast this actually is. It is pretty quick. Not as fast as what Mechanism can do, but for early on being able to be within itself, it's pretty darn quick, especially considering uh, like how many furnaces are actually in this pack. There's not a lot. Um, so there's only so many ways that you can actually cook. And you can see that right here. These are the furnace options. And so, yeah, I mean, we don't have a whole lot other than the, the smelter uh, smeltery factories, which that, of course, would be the fastest with the multiple slots and, and max upgrades. But there we go. So this will be a nice early game quick way of sending it utilizing that lava that we set up. Now, I'm thinking that uh, using our lava, our precious, precious lava at the moment, to, uh, you know, feed our power-hungry machines, I I feel like we should probably switch to something else because we have tons and tons of resources. Look how much nether quartz we have. Why don't we use nether quartz as power? You may be thinking, nether quartz as power? What do you mean, nether quartz is power? Well, there's actually a way to do that. Uh, the lapidary uh, dynamo is is pretty nice. Um, so we can actually use gems, <laughs> gemstones, and quartz is considered that. Uh, we can actually feed that. Instead of coal and using a, a sterling dynamo, we might be able to get away with using this. And uh, we'll replace our lava here 
with this. Uh, I mean everything. So right, we should be able to take our exporter and we'll change this to items and we'll do quartz, right? And uh, we'll put the quartz in here. Let's see, we should, we pop back in here. There, the quartz is in there. Um, and we should be able to place this in here. Maybe if I can, if I can get that to place properly. I gotta, I gotta get it to place underneath here. Uh, well, that, that works, but it's, it's the wrong way. But yeah, it looks like this will generate the same once it's upgraded. Man, we should get quite a bit of power from this. Uh, is there, uh, I needed the wrench from Thermal, uh, which is actually called a hammer. Uh, not a wrench. I always get that wrong. But yeah, it is, it's a hammer, a crescent hammer. And we should be able to rotate that. There we go. Now we have the power spewing in. And actually, this holds its augments, so we have to pull these out. And we should be able to put the same augments in. And boom, there we do. We were producing 640 with our nether quartz. And uh, we have way more nether quartz than we have of anything else. Now that we have power and the processing power slash speed, um, we should be able to get our products now processed and get them started. Uh, it's semi-automated. Uh, so we can get these ores nice and processed up. They're not going to be grinded up or anything like that. What they're going to be done is we're just going to get this first round nice and smelted so we have storage. Now, I'm going to need compacting drawers for this. Uh, I want to get each of these ores inside of a compacting drawer. So here's all of our compacting drawers, and we're going to hook this up to our system. Uh, actually, let us we probably should lock them first uh, before anything else gets put into them. Make sure they're all nice and locked. There we go. And uh, let's get the materials in. So I think out of all of our materials, we should have everything. We're gonna need iron. I have it listed here, iron, osmium, zinc. I need to get all of the ingots form put in. So everything's up and ready to go. And uh, there's something special that is a part of the refined storage mod uh, that makes this all super simple. So I have my connection going right here at the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to set all of these raw materials to slowly but surely get processed, right? They're going to all get processed and turned into their form. And at some point, this is going to drain all of the drawers and uh, it should only smelt as something pulls in, right? So, so it should keep up over time. I have a feeling it should keep up. So to get this started, let's go ahead and place an interface right underneath here. This is an interface from refined storage. What it can do is it can import uh, items into the system and export items out of it. And we just have to define what items we want to export. And if the machine can auto automatically output like this can when it's set to both orange and blue, um, it should automatically output the item. So let's go ahead and turn this off for right now. And let's go ahead and get our raw materials in. So I should be able to go raw and then just drag the items that I want processing in here. And based on the priority of, uh, of this system, we shouldn't get ingots going into our disk drive. We should not have items going into here. All of the raw material should end up going into these drawers. So we should start seeing, as you can see right there, our iron numbers are starting to go up from it being processed. Um, and we can go ahead and set all of the, uh, the raw, well, almost all of it. We only have nine slots, so we really have to sort of prioritize what we want going in here. For example, zinc needs to go there. Osmium we can put on the end. And uh, let's see, we also want all of the stuff from uh, thermal. So uh, let's go ahead and grab those. So tin, lead, silver, and nickel. Uh, and so once all the iron is exported out of here, we shouldn't have a single problem. It looks like it's exporting pretty fast. Uh, we can always add some speed upgrades and that would definitely make it go a little faster as far as the uh, the import back into the system goes. But it's already going pretty fast. I mean, this is uh, this is some fast processing right here and uh, should hopefully keep up once it gets through the you know few thousand items that are backlogged. Now, while those things are processing, I am working on adding some uh, windows into the build uh, because right now, I would say the build is definitely a little dark feeling and I don't I don't want that feeling so um, I do want to clear open some areas and add some nice windows and it does add some really cool lighting effects too with these shaders uh, and I'm, I'm using the glass blower uh, it is a uh, thing from chipped and I'm just taking uh, some regular white stained glass tossing it in and using these arched white stained glasses 
which look really good. These are these are fantastic looking. Now I am breaking a bunch of blocks and I really want to get away from the diamond pickaxe. There's a lot of cool mods in here for tools, uh, including Tetra, which I kind of want to get into later on, if at all possible. Uh, but for right now, I think a fantastic tool is built right into thermal. And since we're already diving into this mod, might as well get this done. Uh, now, upgrading uh, this tool is just as simple as all of the other machines. So by default, the flux bore is kind of boring. Uh, it, it can only mine a single block, but it can mine dirt, which is kind of cool. You can see it mines dirt. It mines, uh, you know, stone and all that stuff. The way we upgrade it is with the Tinker's Workbench, and we put this in here. For one, it's going to charge when it's in the charge slash fill mode. Uh, when we go to augment mode, that's when we can start to add some things. So we can start to add these components to it. And so adding these components are is going to increase the mining speed. You can see now it's going a lot faster, um, but that's just the base speed. Like that's just this uh, integral component because there's actually some uh, some other augments. So we can actually add a radial enhancement and this makes it mine a three by three. Uh, you can see it adds one radius. So, so we can get this up to like a seven by seven. I think it goes three by three, five by five, seven by seven. Um, but uh, you you lose out on some of the other augments you can put in here. But I think these are some of the best because you can also enchant this tool. So keep that in mind. This can be enchanted. When you put these upgrades in here, it also increases the amount of RF this can store. Now, in the same vein, I definitely want to have the flux saw as well because this can't break wood very fast. Uh, the saw, however, can do that. And uh, we encounter tons of things that are axe like. And so this will be great. I already have my uh, my augments ready to go. So we can go ahead and toss that in here. You can see that is going to store a lot more power. We don't have to charge it in here. We can charge it elsewhere. But now we have this uh, this in here. Now, for right now, I'm going to keep this a single size block uh, to mine uh, because we're not mining underground. But when I go to mine underground, I'm going to be switching it most likely uh, to that three by three. Actually, you know what? It does have a keybind toggle and we can toggle through the different sizes. So, you know what? How about we uh, we definitely make that radius? Yeah, we can do that. Uh, it's not very expensive either. It's just, yeah, some iron gears. So let's put the max that this can accept. You know, actually, I, I probably don't want to do that because I'll accidentally switch into it. Let's just put a 3x3 three three on it for right now and use that to mine the 3x3, three three, all right? Let's let's put uh, put this in it. And uh, I, I if I remember correctly, this, this is a 3x3, three three, not a 2x2, two two, right? Now, you have to go into your key binds to change what size this is. By default, the V key is the blo the one to change it. Yeah, so you can see area three by three and then single block. So we can toggle that back and forth with that V key. Oh my gosh, we have an Enderman party. Apparently the uh, the inhibitor is just not functioning on the Enderman. But here we go. Here is a great test. Look at that. Bam, we mined a three by three. So that is how easy it is to get a three by three tool. And this makes it so much easier to mine because it's so much faster and it doesn't even have efficiency on it. Once you put efficiency on it, it's almost insta break. It is pretty nice. So I think so far the base is looking fantastic. And like I said, it is only going to expand from here. Uh, so the outer roof part is uh, going to be more platforms. Like I said, this is just going to be a space where we can jump up to the next level. Uh, AKA also maybe have a stairwell here. I'm still debating on whether or not this is going to be a stairwell. Um, or just another utility location, but right in here, we definitely have an elevator that takes us up to the next level. Uh, it is a pretty little place for the windows, though. Uh, next episode, we definitely need to get you get the uh, bees going. Yeah, bees got to get going ASAP uh, because we're going to need honey. Insider quests, uh, power and honey uh, unlock our next stages, which is going to be the 16 budding amethyst. We need some precision mechanisms and things like that. And to get precision mechanisms, well, we're going to need a little bit of space. Um, not too much, believe it or not. Uh, but we needed to craft some gears, get all this stuff up, up and going. And my goodness, I have some I have some big plans. I have some big plans. So if you would, click that subscribe button so you can stay notified whenever I do publish a new video. So you don't miss out. So you don't miss out whenever I do publish a new one. Another great way to stay notified is by uh, joining the notification squad over on the Discord. Discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. So be sure to join that. Link's all down in the description below. And with that today, uh, my goodness, what an episode, what an episode. What, we, what, we got tons of stuff done. 
And uh, I'm super excited. This only makes things easier moving forward. But of course, guys, it is time to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that huge thanks is going to go to Bean Green. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode where more shenanigans will take place. As always, thanks for watching. So what do you think about the new Minecraft update? I honestly feel like it's, uh, it's groundbreaking. <laughs> Oh no.